I'm just gonna um, have to be honest. I'm just not like obsessed with it, you know? Hey everyone, it's Lucy and today I'm going to be doing a first impressions and review on my face using Auric. Now, uh, the brand is called Auric, but the Instagram handle is Glow by Auric because if you search Auric, you're not necessarily going to find this brand. So <sighs> I have a lot of things to talk about. I have always really enjoyed Sam Ravendahl's content. I remember her from the Battle Lash days and I have enjoyed seeing her YouTube kind of go from, you know, doing very like creative, colorful looks all the way through to natural looks. So it doesn't surprise me at all that she's gone with this kind of vibe for her products. Uh, she's definitely ventured more into natural glowy glam over the years and that's cool. Like that's her niche. Um, but I want to talk about these products from end to end. So the shopping experience, the packaging, the products themselves, and then first impressions, and then a summary. Because there are only two products that they launched with. And by the time I logged on to shop, because I just wasn't so desperate to buy it that I needed to wake up at a ridiculous hour, there was only one shade left of the eye product. So meh, it's fine. They're kind of all a bit neutral, like, I didn't have a preference basically. I would have bought whichever one was left. So anyway, it's luck of the draw. Um, I also want to first start by saying number one, I'm based in Australia. So my shopping experience is going to be about purchasing it from the US slash yes, the US. That is where she said their products are coming from. Um, so the shopping experience, um, the packaging, how long it took to get here, and then I'm going to talk about my particular skin tone and skin type and the climate of Australia and whether these products are suitable for the climate of Australia. So I'm in Sydney. Um, I have, this is my skin color. <laughs> so it's pale, but it's not the palest, okay? I'm not super fair. I'm definitely not porcelain. Uh, I have a bit of color to my skin. And as you can see, I have dark circles. I have uh, some hormonal coloring around here. Like it's fine, That's I have no issue. I'm just pointing it out. I've got redness here and here. The reason why I'm pointing this all out is because this product has been described as something that could be used on its own, like without concealer and other things. And I mean, I guess we'll see. It's definitely not a foundation the way I use foundation or concealer, but we'll give it a go. Um, but let's start from the beginning. So firstly, Sam is Canadian. The company is based in the US, so the products ship from the US. I'm gonna look on my phone and see, when did I order this? Let's search my inbox. So, I searched Glow by Auric in my inbox and nothing came up. Let me search Auric. Nope. That's so funny. I searched my inbox and it came, and do you know what came back? It was an order from 2011 of Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics in the shade Auric. So interesting. That brand doesn't exist anymore. Trippy. So I'm going to check my other inbox. Maybe it's there. Nothing is showing up for Auric, and I think I know why, and this is the next topic. So, Glow, maybe I search Glow because that's, yeah, okay. So, I'm searching my inbox for Auric, and nothing is coming up. The reason why is because Auric is owned or run by another company and that company is Magic Dusk. So isn't it crazy that you can search your inbox with the word Auric and literally you can't find your order? So that's the first kind of problem that I have with this brand. I think it's absolutely fine to have a parent company. I know that Sam spoke about this on her podcast. She explained that she was looking into doing this 
fully on her own with her mum and obviously there's huge expenses and different types of experience that you need to be able to do that. So she decided to partner with another person slash company. That's fine. Um, I think it would have been good to disclose the name of the company, which is Magic Dusk, before the launch. Um, because when I got the confirmation email and when I went through the checkout process, I suddenly started seeing Magic Dusk, or I think it might have even been once I placed the order, suddenly I was on this Magic Dusk website, and that was a bit strange. Um, so all the emails are from Magic Dusk, and then I went to the Magic Dusk website and I saw that they have another brand, which is lipsticks with Colleen Ballinger. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And um, I don't know, like to me, that's so random. I get it, but um, it just doesn't have that same luxury appeal as this Auric brand is supposed to have. So to me, when there's a company with several brands underneath, they should theoretically all have the same kind of aesthetic and vibe or at least appeal to the same demographic stylistically maybe you disagree with that but i just think it was very random that that's the only other brand or maybe there was a third one i can't remember but very strange so then when you click even the customer service and everything goes to magic dusk if you click visit our store from the email it takes you to the magic dusk website like i think that's a bit strange and then it says introducing auric cosmetics so it's like they're presenting the brand but then you scroll right down bam colleen ballinger um and then it doesn't i think they're the only brands i'm not 100 percent sure and look this is fine okay the guy that she's partnering with i think it's a guy um, he's obviously got heaps of experience. He started this company to launch these influencer brands. I just think it could have had a bit more disclosure about that exact relationship and setup of the business. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm also seeing this from a perspective of like, I'm a design director in the fashion industry. And to me, like this type of thing is extremely important in terms of like disclosing where things are made and the correlation between different companies and all of that. I think transparency is key. So to me, this is a bit random, but anyway. So then I receive a confirmation email. So let's see what date I ordered it. Cause I feel like it's been a while. So I placed the order on the 29th of Jan and I believe I received it on, I think it was the 16th of Feb. So I don't think it was yesterday. I think it was the day before actually. I think I received on the 16th or 17th of Feb and I ordered it on the 29th. That doesn't mean, actually, no. I ordered on the 27th of Jan. It was shipped on the 29th of Jan. So it took over two weeks to get here, which is fine. Uh, it would be nice if it was seven to 10 days, two weeks plus is fine. But anyway, it's interesting. At least they ship globally. I'll give them that they ship globally. I'm pretty sure to most countries. So that's good. The next thing is the shipping box. So let's go back to the start. Firstly, this is the box that it comes in. So on the outside is just like the raw cardboard and then the inside is branded. So I appreciate that they haven't done a branded box inside a packing box. That's good. And it's also, filled with just, I guess, recycled brown paper to, so there's no bubble wrap, so good. Um, however, then we have the printed invoice. That's fine, I'm, I, I don't need to show you that. There's an invoice, a packing slip, and it's saying that it's been sent from Long Beach, California. So that's obviously where they're based. Okay, and that's fine. It just lists the two products. The website did not convert the prices to AUD. It just was paying in USD as well, in case you were wondering. The two products that I got are the Glow Lust in Morganite, which is the lightest shade, and Smoke Reflect in Ego. And I did ask 
Gabby which shade she thought I would be and she did suggest Morganite so thank you Gabby um, she worked on the campaign which is really cool I'm happy for her and I'm excited to see see how we go there's definitely already been a couple of reviews out there with people with paler skin than me so I appreciated watching those while I had a migraine yesterday <laughs> but I wanted to do this as quickly as possible um, let's get straight into it the packaging let's start with this now I've got a completely blank face by the way and I think I'm gonna oh, tie my hair up maybe I'll tie it to the side so we can review this better without my hair going in the way and I really think because this product I've already swatched it on my hand a little bit uh, it has a sticky texture so I think we're gonna need to keep hair out of the way so in terms of this box I think that they've done really the best that they could I don't think you could make this any more sustainable unless you shipped it in a biodegradable bag with some sort of other stuff inside to stop it from getting broken but really like makeup has to be shipped in a box so I think that gets a gold star whether or not this shiny coating makes it harder to recycle is another question Comparing it to the packaging of like Axiology, no, it's not that, it's not that sustainable. Now, this has a sort of like velvety, slippery feeling to it, which I don't know, it kind of creeps me out. I don't know why, but I don't know why. It's like a matte, slippery feeling. Um, I love the branding and the logo. I think it's beautiful, like it's really nice. And the gold, lettering like it does make it look expensive so that's nice then you open it up and it's got the internal slightly thicker cardboard to protect it it's heavy this is a glass bottle with a plastic lid with plastic fake plastic metal here and a plastic pump so there are still plastic components I mean I don't know how you avoid plastic components with this type of product I think you know you think about like a hand soap dispenser that might be metal those kinds of things work with a very specific texture of hand soap and they do have the tendency to go rusty I think that over time it would be really interesting to see if maybe there could be a glass or metal lid and maybe a glass, not a glass pump, <laughs> maybe a metal pump. Um, comment down below if you have purchased a liquid product that has a metal pump. I haven't, I don't think. Pretty much everything I can see in front of me has a plastic pump, but for a luxury brand, I feel like it should be possible. Um, I know she mentioned that they're looking to sort of improve the packaging and sustainable situation over time, that's good. Um, but for an initial launch, I don't look at this brand as sustainable. Like first glance, it's just like a normal sort of Estee Lauder, Giorgio Armani, Tom Ford kind of packaging. To me, it's not sustainable. It's not, again, it's not axiology, like minimal, minimal, minimal packaging, super recycled, super paper-based. It's not that. So I think as well, when you put these kinds of finishes, on cardboard it does make it harder to recycle but maybe this is the kind of packaging that people want to keep as a souvenir is that me no I don't I don't want to keep this um, the lid is nice like you saw really hard to come off which is good because I think a lot of the time these lids will fall off especially when traveling haha <laughs> travel uh, let's get straight into the pump. So I know in Sam's video she said she spent a lot of time working on this pump. Okay, so I'm going to show you the product on my hand. First impression is it looks a little, a little pink, a little orangey on my skin. And I'm not really sure how this is going to go on my face. But that's just generally what it's looking like, kind of swelling it around with my finger it's interesting um, I'll try and sort of rub it in a little better 
Okay, it's interesting. It's like a very creamy glow. Comparing this to the Glossier liquid highlighter, that one is really runny. Comparing it to Cover FX, that one's really runny. So this is very creamy, sticky formula, thicker. And I guess we'll see how it performs on the face. So we'll give this a go in a minute. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the Smoke Reflect in the shade Ego. It's in a little box. And then this is um, Frosted Glass. Really nice debossed logo on the front and we've got a little mirror inside as well which um, I would never use like I'm never going to be like trying to do my makeup with this little freaking mirror no way would never use this um, to me that's pointless I would not bother including that but that's fine this is what the top shade looks like yeah and so it's kind of a greeny gold. That's what I think it looks like, but we'll see. And then inside, it's got this little cap in here, which has branding on it. And there's no clear way to remove it. I just kind of like put my finger on top and sort of let it stick a little bit and lift it up. But there's no real edge to pick it up. I guess you can sort of pick it up like that. And then I guess you have to put it face up because it's got some product on it and then try and pick it up off the table and put it back. I'm, I'm assuming that you're meant to kind of keep it on there permanently to keep the product how it's supposed to be. Let's have a look inside. So you can see um, it's like a little blob of product and actually there is a gap all the way around here. It's not necessarily a negative, it's just something that I noticed. The product has either just been put in a blob and it's kind of gone to the side or it was maybe partially melted during shipping and has shifted over to one side or it's shrunk I don't know it's um it's interesting I've never really seen that before with this type of product where it's like been pushed to the side of the jar it's interesting um and I'm gonna swatch these directly on my eye I don't think I'm gonna just test them on my hand I don't think I mean I could do swatches but I just want to test it right on my face and see what happens so in terms of this packaging it's cute um, the closest thing that I have to compare it to would be these bodyography things so it's uh, diameter wise it's bigger slightly bigger than the bodyography bodyography is I think this is plastic and this is glass or at least is this glass yeah I think it is and I think this is plastic but maybe it's glass I don't know um, but the bodyography ones they have these little guys which have a little a little little knob to remove it so I find that to be great I wish that these I wish that the auric auric one had a little handle to remove the thing but that's kind of, it's heavy, so it must be glass. And I guess, how do we compare it? Okay, it's actually exactly the same size as the Glossier concealer. And so that's interesting, but it's taller, obviously. So that's what I would kind of compare it to. And it's heavier, but yeah, Glossier one is glass. All right, so I wanna kind of have some different things aside. I want to approach this from the perspective of like, I don't really want to have to do my makeup in a different way because of this product. I want to try and use like the technique and process that I would normally use. However, I think that I need to use this straight on my skin. I don't think I can moisturize. I don't think that's going to go well. And I think that you should see how it goes on my skin naturally. So I'm going to zoom in. All right, let's just go for it. I'm just going to try it with my fingers. And I don't know if this is meant to be like used all over the face or just on the cheeks, but to me, okay, I've said this before, I have oily combination skin. So I get oily all down the T-zone 
and then here I'm normal so oily normal um, and typically I would not use pro these types of products when I use a liquid or cream I have to set with powder because these products just sit on my skin they don't soak in um, even on the normal area so I'm just gonna um, <laughs> I don't know is this what you do it feels like the consistency of like a thick sunscreen I kind of want to go down okay it's blended out but then I can see some sort of it's hard because I don't have my light on my mirror I'm gonna put my mirror on just for a sec my light basically it just makes my skin look glowy and feel sticky so I'm just going to keep going and just treat this like I would a foundation, I guess. I'm not doing a half face. I'm just kind of, this is how I would apply <laughs> like a thick sunscreen. That's what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just doing what I feel like it feels natural. It's surprisingly not as sticky on the skin as I thought it would be. I'll do the other side. Whoa, that might have been too much. It looks really orange and so shiny at this angle. Mm. And I'll be like unashamedly zooming in so that you can see like if it goes into dry patches or whatever else. It's weird because like it's so thick that you can't even sort of like pat it out. I feel like Oh, it's really hard to tell, but I feel like it's making my face look orange. Is it? <laughs> is it just me? Or does it have like an orange glow to it now? Um, okay. I don't know, like, maybe you're not meant to put it on your whole face, but... I watched all the videos and stuff. My interpretation of it was that it was an all-over face glow. Maybe I misinterpreted that. Look, okay. Let's just do it like this. You know, sometimes you can use a highlighter and then cream products first, then, you know, blush, bronzer, highlight first, then other stuff. I think what I need to do next is go in with my concealer because my face is all glowy and that's cool, but I need to cover my dark circles so let's do what we normally do and see how let's see how stretch concealer with a sponge reacts to this situation like let's just see like what happens where the two meet I kind of don't want to like go over it, but I'm just putting, I'm putting concealer where I normally would. So putting my light on, it seems to be blending pretty well with the concealer, so that's good. I kind of want to conceal here just a little. Interesting. I don't really know what to say. Uh, hmm. It's certainly interesting. I think my mirror was reflecting on it a bit before, so I just moved it. <sighs> what do you think? I'm 
Okay, so it still feels sticky. And I have to set my concealer. So I'm going to set my concealer and then I'm going to see... Let's see what happens if I don't set the rest of the face. I never do that. Anyway, I'm going to use Laura Mercier Translucent. Let's try a little hand mirror situation. Am I go I feel like I'm going into this kind of skeptical and maybe that's just because this is not the kind of product I would typically use. I feel like it's um, really highlighting some bumps that I have here, but maybe when I put powder down it won't. I have to just powder my face, like I just can't not powder it. It feels... And maybe am I, am I undoing like the... The power of this product I don't know I don't think so like you can see the glow coming through the translucent powder so I'm just using this how I would use like a very sheer foundation or a liquid a liquid glow I don't ever not use powder so that's if you want to see someone use this without setting it with powder then this is not the review for you but I'm I'm in Australia I need powder. It gets hot, okay? All right. So, you can see the glow. It's coming through. This is like a very natural face. Would I be scared to then put this back over my cheeks? Absolutely. I think it would create a sticky mess. See, now I can... It still feels... Some of the stickiness is still coming through. Very interesting. It just looks like I have nothing on my face but all my sort of pigmentation and redness is gone. Partially because of the concealer, but I feel like I use less concealer than I normally would. Hmm. Okay. So I don't really know what to say. I think the color blended out okay, but I'm also going to take photos with flash, which will be a more accurate uh, representation of the color. Uh, the lighting right now has gone a little dark. I do prefer to film my videos in natural lighting, but you can see that um, the light is a little darker on my face than I would prefer, but I'm going to push on. I'm going to put brows on and come back and test this little guy. I'm back and the light has changed yet again. It is a very rainy week in Sydney. However, this is still technically natural light and I really really didn't want to use lights for this I wanted you guys to see exactly what's happening on my skin in natural light without lights and blurring effects and anything like that so I threw on some brows <laughs> very very quickly let's get into smoke reflect in ego um, I find this product name a little confusing. Like the shade name is Ego, but the product is called Smoke Reflect. I think maybe it's called Smoke Reflect because you do a smoky eye and the reflect is the shiny. Uh, but to me, Smoke Reflect sounds like the color name. Anyway, that's... Glow Lust makes sense as the other product name. Anyway, let's just get straight into it. I'm going to zoom in a little further. Actually, not too far because I don't want to go off screen. I'm going to remove this little guy. I'm going to use my finger and see what happens. Oh, okay. So it's very, very moosey. Very, very moosey. Um, I'm going to use a little mirror and we'll see what happens. Also, obviously, I have hooded eyes. So we shall see 
how this goes creasing wise. Is it the kind of product that creases or nah? Going in for another a second dip. Concentrating most of the product down the bottom and I am raising my eyebrows because it's a cream product. Using a clean finger to sort of flick these little blobs out of the way. And I'm then just sort of tapping around the perimeter to try and make this a nice workable shape. I guess it is a smoky eye, wow. It's smokier from a distance than it looks up close. So that's, that's what's happening. It's a smoky eye for sure. And it feels like it's kind of, it feels like it's setting as I'm doing this. I would like to keep my eye kind of upwards before relaxing my eye. So I'll go and do the other eye now. Is that symmetrical? I think so. Sort of. It's hard to tell in this kind of lighting if it's actually blended out. I'm gonna put my light on and just check. Ooh. Oh no. So with the light on, it's revealing that it is quite patchy around the edges where I was blending it out. I don't really know how to fix that. I mean, maybe if you do it on bare skin, it blends better than like a powdered lid. But if I'm honest, like I'm not gonna change how I normally do my makeup. I will never change the order in which I do my makeup. Uh, for a particular product unless I'm doing like a black eyeshadow look then of course I'm going to do that before I do my whole face but I just I'm definitely a face first then eye kind of gal so I don't think it needs to be sticky before you put the topper on it is still sticky I can feel it so now we'll go in with the same finger to this heavily pressed metallic shadow that does have like a greeny gold pewter kind of is it pewter greeny gold look to it and i'm just going right over the top because i feel like this look is very dark for the daytime and maybe maybe if i do this over the whole thing it will sort of help the edges not look so sloppy It's not as um, easy to apply over the base as I thought. You kind of have to keep dipping back in. It's quite heavily pressed in this little pan, but it's looking nice. And so this is lightening the color, as you can see. It's changing it to more of like a greeny blue, I guess, but still a smoky eye. I'm just gonna go all the way around. I would typically apply this kind of shadow with my finger anyway because yeah so that's what it looks like without and that's what it looks like with interesting okay do I love it am I obsessed with it nah but like <clears throat> maybe I'll also go under the eye and I will put Maybe it needs an eyeliner, but maybe I'll just put some mascara and see if that does the trick. Let's do the other eye. I don't know, would I use this tiny mirror? Let me try. <laughs> Let me try and use this tiny mirror. I guess. I guess you could. Depends on your eyesight and whether this works for you. It's very small. Feels a bit awkward to hold it like this. It's almost like not sparkly enough for me personally, but I like it, I get it, I get it. I get the vibe. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to leave it at that and then I'm going to 
Am I going to try and go under the eye? I'm going to go under the eye with the Cut Creaser C4 brush and just kind of get the product down and then I'll blend it out with a different one. Ooh, yeah, such a soft product. It's easy to put too much on the brush. I'm just trying to kind of line the under eye. Okay, and then I'll blend it out with this brush. Because I haven't tried using a brush yet. This isn't the, the synthetic brush. I'm going to try using the shimmer with a brush and just see what happens. up a little bit but not much it's just so heavily pressed now I think unfortunately I have to try and use my finger under the eye which is more difficult that's actually really hard now I'm gonna go back to the brush and just make it work we did it the other thing that's kind of throwing me off is my face is just so plain has no dimension so I am gonna just throw a bit of bronzer on otherwise I just feel too pale I think the thing for me with the cream product is it doesn't give you much control over the shape that you're creating if you're using your finger and I just don't really see how that product would work well with a brush in terms of like a winged liner or something like that so that's why I've ended up doing just a very rounded simple eye shape I think it will look better with mascara I probably would have preferred maybe like the bronzy colored one but maybe that's too boring for me but maybe this is too boring for me I don't know my instincts are telling me to just like add some bodyography on top and like add some blush and highlighter but I'm trying to do things the glow by auric way and make this a pretty natural look okay I think what I would be interested in from this brand would be like a liquid blush like glowy uh, blushes because that's what I feel like my face is missing. I think I have to put blush on. Like I just, I think I look dead. Just the tiniest, tiniest bit. Let's do, let's do just a little bit of peachy, shimmery NARS blush. I just need to look alive, you know? Oh, that's better. Just a little bit. Am I fully covering up the actual product? Maybe, but let's not forget that I have no skincare on. So this is still a test of how it feels. And also I'm not using a setting spray, which I normally would. I need lip balm to kind of pull this together. So, this is, yeah, this is a full face of the two Glow by Auric products, and all right, let's summarize. Let's summarize. I'm going to put some photos in here of how I normally take my photos, the exact same lighting, and we'll see how that looks. Am I obsessed with this look? No. Would I rush to buy another color of this product? No. Uh, do I think my skin looks good? Yes. I think my skin looks nice. Um, bearing in mind I also have concealer, powder, blush, bronzer. I have a new setting spray. Oh, this is another really important thing. So with this, 
Because I put it on bare skin, I wasn't able to do my normal skincare routine of adding an oil, a moisturizer, an SPF. So this is not necessarily suited to someone who needs to wear other skincare products for other reasons. I actually haven't looked at ingredients because I'm just not... Let's see, it's water-based, mica, glycerin. Mm. It's got a lot of ingredients. I think that uh, this shade is probably just okay for my skin tone, but anyone paler, absolutely not. I think it has a peachy tinge to it that has made my skin look darker than it normally does, and it's passable. This eye is starting to water. Like, I can't ignore that. It, it is. It is. Um, God, this has really thrown me off, this brand. I'm so excited for it, but I have to be honest. I just don't know. If you think this looks amazing, then let me know. And if you think it looks boring, <laughs> then let me know as well. I'll be posting it on my Instagram and, and getting feedback there too. I'm just not sure. I'm just not like obsessed with it, you know? I'm gonna flip my mirror around. Hopefully that doesn't cause too much of a reflection on my face. So I wanna just have a look. This is my this is my mirror that I use. I'm gonna inspect my skin close up. I'll do it just over here. So close up, what am I seeing? I'm seeing there's a little bit of caking here. Which, honestly, pretty much everything does on my face. And I, this is what I do, I just tap it away. It happens throughout the day, it's normal, that's fine. Because I've got a crease, that's fine. It, there's a little creasing into my lines here. Probably more than usual. Mmm... There's a few stray sort of like hairs and random things like stuck to my face just because it's such a sticky formula. I don't know. I'm just like undecided. And I think that's the summary. Um, I'm not going to rush out and buy anything else from this brand in terms of these two products. If they launch or when they launch other products, I'll just decide when I see them. But um I think the eye look is nice, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's an easy product to apply. I think the way I applied it was an advanced to expert level of application. I know that sounds weird, but like I know plenty of people, friends, family, etc., who would struggle to apply this product themselves. Um, they would struggle to get both eyes to look the same and they would struggle to blend out the edges. Um, Maybe they'd also struggle. If you have long nails, then it's not going to be easy. To I just don't know. I think my summary is I don't know. I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I dislike it. And I think that's fine. I don't think I need to make a flash decision. I've I've said my piece about the packaging and the, the brand parent, the parent company. Um, so this is it. This is me. If you want to see more of these kinds of honest reviews and first impressions, then don't forget to give me a like, which is a thumbs up, and subscribe, and obviously comment. I would love to have a chat to you about these products. If you're thinking about getting them, let me know in the comments down below and let's, let's discuss. And feel free to check out my other videos, which are pretty random, and that's the way it's going to stay. <laughs> see you next time. Bye.